Good morning all and welcome to today's video. I hope you had a great weekend by the way. So I have three pairs on watch today and those are Swiss Yen, Kiwi Dollar and Dollar Swiss. So I'm going to break them down for you now and give you my thought process as always. So Swiss Yen, I've been looking at this for a little while now and it is starting to do what I was anticipating it would do. Okay, so on the weekly chart, you can see if I just zoom out, you can see that we've just been going up and up and up and up for a long period of time. And then once we get into this area here, price starts to give us the psychological patterns that we typically look for. Okay. By that, I mean that we have an impulse correction continuation, which breaks an all time high. Okay. If I just draw down to the daily, this will be slightly more clear. But we have this impulse correction continuation we break the all-time high and then we have that kind of one two three middle section which i talk about we have that one two three middle section within this one two three which breaks an all-time high and if we measure the impulse and we assume that the continuation leg out of a correction is usually of a similar length what do you know that takes us up to just above this high where I would have anticipated people that believe what was previously res resistance becomes support once it's broken above and they believe that price is just going to go in. This is where they keep going. That's where I would anticipate that they start buying. And then what we see in the majority of cases is that price comes crashing to the downside. And you can see that that has happened once again, or it certainly appears to be happening at the moment. And one of the clues for me that that would happen is that we had a near miss. So we had a, a low which came close to this low, which didn't quite tag it. And then we also had a low here, which came close to this low, the start of this piece of structure, but didn't quite tag it. When that happens, it often means that there's still liquidity at this low if we near miss to it, and liquidity at this low if, if we didn't quite tap into it, which needs to be filled, okay, which is going to drag price down. So when I see price break above here, I've seen this many, many times. I said the question that I asked myself is when we break above these all time highs, if we are going long, which can happen, where are we actually going long to? And I said, if, if we zoom out, there's nothing. It's an all time high. Okay. So if we are going long, once we break above these highs, where are we actually going long to? You've got to remember that the bigger players, the banks, etc., that know what they're doing they have a plan they treat trading like a business so therefore they have a business plan they know where or they have a rough idea of the areas where they're going to get in and out and if they can't see anything to the left uh, why would they get long if there's no target area for them to get out at as i said we can have it's not that price can't go long but if we were going to go long what we would typically see is a break above the all-time high and then we would see some kind of structure like that okay and then we can say oh okay something has changed the sentiment has shifted and we now have three you know or at least two bases to work with okay and then we could say oh okay this now represents a low price which price could pretend which if it tapped into it again could represent a high area of value for a buy but we didn't see that we just broke above and came crashing back down and if we really zoom in you can actually see the psychology, I believe. I think I saw this last night. You can see here, <clears throat> price breaks above. It comes back down. Many people have seen this as a retest, so they start getting long. It breaks, uh, it taps into this area again. Many people would have seen this as a retest to get long, so they start getting long. Price goes sideways for a period of time and then comes crashing to the downside. So, what I'll be anticipating today, or what I'll be looking for rather, is the following. This is not about, you know, I'm not psychic or anything like that. You know, the majority of my projections do play out in the forecasted direction. But, you know, it's, it's not that I'm psychic or that anyone else who trades the way that we do is psychic. It's just that these patterns repeat themselves. Patterns, by definition, are something which repeats them, which repeats itself over and over again. OK, so we've we've complete we've we've fallen out of this uh, corrective wave now. We've fallen out of that well and truly pushed to the downside. So what I'll be looking for quite simply 
is for price to correct sideways and then I will be looking to get short with a risk entry. Um, normally you would see me taking a reduced risk entry or a risk entry so where I would have a, a possible entry on the break but just looking at this the stop loss is very very wide. Okay that's not typically the kind of stop loss that I would um, uh, place uh, especially after such a big move down typically speaking when we have such a big move down like this the corrections tend to be slightly bigger than if this was a smaller impulse so the corrections are usually proportionate to the impulse which has preceded them so for that reason you um, i would anticipate a slightly larger correction and that appears to be what we're getting and my first target would be if I just put that back, my first target would be this low here. Okay, and the reason that would be my first target is because if we just pattern separate this, okay, we have this three touch structure here, which has a one, two, three middle section. If I just zoom in on that a little bit, okay, which just also happens to retest this high here, okay, so it's an area of significance. Okay, we have this one, two, three, which pushes higher. One, two, three, middle section. The third, the uh, third touch retests the back end of that. So that is just a, a kind of first target, and I would easily be able to get my risk off of the tool, uh, off of the, or, um, off of the table by the time that price got down there for something in the region of eight to nine percent, depending on the size of the stop loss. Of course, if it was slightly larger then it would be maybe something in the region of 5%, but easily able to manage this trade, okay? And if we just measure where the impulse started and take it to the, the bottom of the correction, that would likely, we would likely have enough momentum to take us down to that area that I was talking about, likely break that low. So even if we reacted there for some reason, I'd be able to trail my, my stop above that low for something in the region of 7%. Okay, but the real solid target, the real the real target is this one down here to take out this low here, this wick. Okay, and you can see there's a massive uh, profit potential on that trade. So that is Swiss yen. So I'm going to move on to the next pair. So that is my favorite. There's no reason for price to go back up at the minute. There's, Of course, price can do anything at any time. But at this moment in time, there is no reason for price to go back up. So Kiwi dollar on the higher time frames, we have once again we tap into this area. We do near miss to this area. I said that previously that that is a slight nog neg negative, <laughs> slight negative confluence factor factor even. But we we slightly near miss that area. But I'm not too concerned about that because if you look at where price is now in this region, we're much closer to this um, low, which near miss this low meaning that if we do push lower we will likely take out this near miss and the low that we near miss to last time around for the reasons expressed on swiss yen we are clearly in a run of momentum to the downside if i just zoom out to the weekly you can see that we are clearly in a run of momentum to the downside to potentially take out these two lows and you also we've corrected below this low which gives me a clue that there was not enough liquidity here to send price to the upside to take out uh, this near miss to this high. Okay, so if I drill down, you can start to see the we have the um, I've talked about this previously. We come back up, we we tap into this area, but we do so by way of this uh, bullish candle with a green wick above it usually these candles in particular get filled before we push to the downside we do take out we do fill that wick and then we push to the downside we then have this one two three notice we have a green wick again we we don't uh, we come back up we fill that wick but we near miss to that area we then come back down we have this one two three middle section within this one two three touch structure we break above as we often do on the higher time frames and then push to the downside and we even have a one two three last leg which gives me a clue that this one two three is likely finished and when it lines up with an area of value for a sell that is likely where we will sell off from and we did okay so then we have the same thing again here if we just drill down we have a we have this kind of one, two, three middle section. We then push up to that area, break the high, 
in this instance, we have what we call a scoop double top. So sometimes Price doesn't respond from the third touch and it scoops back up to take out any orders that were set just above there before dropping and we get that. Then crucially, we correct below this low. So we have that impulse correction, potential continuation. And if I just drill down to the, the one hour chart, you can see, I can, I can kind of see the, um, we have this sharp hook point here, sharp move up, sharp move down, giving me a clue that there's likely uh, liquidity here, especially when we're kind of retesting the back of this back end of this previous structure. We near miss to this area, we come back down, we scoop back up, we near miss to it again. We then have that one, two, three middle section. Okay, there we go. We have this one, two, three middle section. It's overextended middle section. And then price comes up. And if you just see, if, if we just look at what how price has moved up, how has price moved up? We have had this impulse correction potential continuation. And if that was to happen, if we just measure the length of the impulse and take it to the top of the correction, and then we take that to the base of the correction, that lines up perfectly with this area where I would anticipate price finding its way to. And if we just analyze the correction itself, what do we have? We have this, we have a low here, price comes back down, it near misses to it, then it comes back down, takes the low out. Okay, so we have this kind of expanding pattern there. There's the low, if we look at this on the 15 minute chart. Yeah, there's the low, we near miss to it, come back up, push down, tap into the low and then push up. And we have within that, we have a one, two, three middle section giving me a clue that this is a completed piece of structure which will likely send price to the upside okay and you can see it, we are getting some momentum now whether that will be ready by the end of the day is another story but because the structure is very clear and all it all it would take is a couple of candles and we could be up in this area and if that was to happen then what i would be looking for is the following i'll be looking for price to tap into this area and then I'll be looking for it to push down, followed by a flag, and then I would look to get short on the break of the flag with a reduced risk entry, or if I could get it, a risk entry within the flag, and then I would be able to manage this down to uh, down to the bottom of the structure for something in the region of 8 to 9%. What we also could get, just to touch on it, because we have that kind of inflection point there, what we could be seeing is something more like that, Okay, and then we end up with, we would add, end up with this, this kind of structure. And then that would be the one, two, three middle section. But we shall see. This is a daily forecast. So I only kind of put my forecasts on things that would be likely by the end of the day. Of course, if that was to happen, it would take a, a bit longer to form. Okay, so just trying to keep things simple. So that is Kiwi Dollar. Uh, the last on my list today is dollar Swiss. So dollar Swiss um, on the higher time frames. If we just zoom in, once again, we have these near misses up here, but you can see that we are well and truly in a run of momentum to the downside. We've tapped into an area here, which you will see on the daily chart, but we're well and truly the the important thing for me, this is kind of just a range play. Uh, we're well and truly in a run of momentum. We've broken above this high, tapped above it, pushed back down, and I would anticipate a move down to this area to take out this low and potentially take out this low, which we near miss to here, before we potentially take out these misses to the upside, okay? So not all of these near misses get filled straight away. And when we're, when we're clearly in a run of momentum to the downside and we have a near miss to the downside, it's more likely that we will take out these lows before pushing up to the upside. And then we would have that kind of, we would have this kind of structure, okay? Do excuse the drawing, but you can see we have this one, two, three with a one, two, three, middle section giving me a clue that this move to the downside would likely complete this larger structure especially when we're trading below this high now before we potentially take out these highs to the upside so that is just the thought process and as i drill down things get a little bit more clear you can see here 
Then we have this high here, this exchange of liquidity. We have a one, two, three touch structure. Price taps into that area. We also have that middle section, one, two, three middle section. But notice on the higher time frames um, that we tap it. We literally just uh, we we tap into this area, but we don't break above it. And as I've said previously, on the higher time frames, we typically break above before moving to the downside. What happens? We scoop back up, break above, tap in, tap the stop loss orders and the limit orders that were up there, and then price moves to the downside. Um, we can also see if we just measure this impulse correction potential continuation. If we just measure the impulse and take it to the break of the correction. Uh, take it to there. If if this was an impulse correction continuation, that would take us down to these regions. And if we measured it on the on the break of this low, that would that would take us down to this area as well. And the reason we measure it on the break sometimes is because the the consolidation, the volume being built up within the correction, often can dictate how far price will uh, break out. You know how how far it will move once it's broken out of the consolidation as people bail out of their positions. So this one, partly why it's lower down, is there's kind of not really much. You can see we have this sharp move up, followed by a sharp move down. We come back up. We near miss to this area, but there's not really any structure to this move up. Okay, and it's been a bit of a corrective wave on the move down. We've had these kind of sharp scoops back up, sharp scoops back up, and so it is. You know, it's a solid trade, but just because partly because of the the way that price has been moving down, this kind of corrective move down and because we don't really have any structure up to here this is slightly lower down on my list but by no means is it a you know a bad trade setup so what i'll be looking for from this pair today is the following if price taps into this area then i'll be looking for price to push down and flag and then i'll be looking to get short on the break of the flag um with either a reduced risk entry or short within it with a risk entry and i've just put kind of put this as my first target just because there's a sharp move down followed by a sharp move up which just so happens to be kind of the the base of this kind of running channel that we have there which just so happens as with uh, swish yen to retest the base of this retests this high here okay so that would be a solid first target uh, the second target would obviously be this low down here and then if if we kept going and said it's unlikely that we'll catch all this move in one go but even just down to just down to this low here we have something in the region of 15 percent and of course to the bottom of the structure 53 percent but as i say that's just the higher time frame moves there will be obviously sharper pullbacks and i would expect a sharper pullback on a pair such as dollar swiss because of the way that it has been moving okay because of these kind of sharp scoops up, there's there's probably going to be more sharp scoops up, which would take you out of the trade. But if we tap into the area and push down, then you know we 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 will be headed to the downside, and we we should be able to manage that easily before any of these scoops actually occur. We may get a little. We often see these when we have kind of these corrective moves up, such as this. What we tend to see as price gets closer to the area of value. If I just move this over slightly, what we may see is what we call an ending structure. So we may see something like price get close. It might near miss. Then we get that middle section. Price then taps into it. And then we may see the pushback in the flag. But we shall see. But that is my forecast, folks. We often we often see that because the second touch acts as a bit of a near miss. The FOMO leg, as I call it, price get gets close people that were patient suddenly become impatient because they think it's going to move without them in quotation marks and, and then it pushes up takes them out and everybody else out and then drops to the downside so the reason we can trade the patterns that we do is because they are psychological in nature and if people are repeating themselves then that gives us a good indication of when the market will move um, when it's less likely to but anyway folks thanks for watching i hope you've taken some value from this and i will be back tomorrow most likely with another video thanks for watching